My name is Michelle Johnson and I am the GIS QA lead at ESRI within the Professional Services Department. Today, I'm here to talk to you about QAQC of your geodata. I want to talk to you about when and how and why you would be wanting to perform QAQC. First, let's talk about um, why it's important. Um, when we need to do this and what does that really mean? Also, I want to talk about maybe make, doing some documentation, coming up with a QA plan, identifying the requirements, and also how we would go about implementing um, the QAQC on your geodatabase. First, why is it important? Well, is it fit for use? You're going to be using this data and, and be performing analysis on it. So is it going to support your GIS applications that you have configured against your geodatabase? Do you have also other third-party applications, other business systems that's hitting against that GIS database as well? You want to make sure that the data in that database can support your applications and business systems. So for example, um, you know, if you need to do some valve isolation tracing or network routing, Maybe you need to maintain events on your roads. You need to make sure that you have a good route network. Um, other business systems, whether it be um, asset management or hydraulic modeling, um, you are making important decisions based on the results from your data. So, you know, having good data, you will have sound decisions. Um, data that may not be as good those decisions may not be as wise. So it's important to have QAQC. Also, there could be times where uh, you may need to do quarterly or annual reporting that may be required for your industry. So you want to make sure you have accurate data and you can be accountable. Now, when should you be doing QAQC? Well, anytime you're getting or making any updates to your data. So in your daily maintenance environment, you know, you're going into your database and you're making daily updates. You want to make sure that you're QCing those updates. Now, if you are doing a data conversion or migration, um, you're going to want to make sure that conversion or migration um, was done properly and meets your needs for your GIS applications and business systems. Now, whether you're purchasing data or downloading it from free from online resources, you want to make sure that data that you're getting also is fit for use. So you want to inspect that data to make sure that it has the things that you need in order to do your job. And also, you may be getting annual data revisions. Maybe you're getting annual updates of the parcel database from the county. Um, you want to make sure that there hasn't been any major changes to that data and it still is in the format and, and in the that nothing has changed, you know, and you can still use it and has the information that you need. Now, I think most of us know what QA stands for and what QC stands for. You know, QA, quality assurance, QC, quality control. But did you know that there's a difference? Well, quality assurance, what I like to think of it is it's a process or a way to prevent errors from being introduced into your data, right? So things that, you know, I would call quality assurance is having a good, strong data model, um, using industry-specific industry editing, editing templates, um, attribute assistant if you're still in ArcMap, attribute roles if you're in ArcGIS Pro, and there could be also be other data-specific editing tools. Um, also, if we talk about quality control, those are, that is where you are identifying errors that's already in your data. So those are going to be checks or tools that you run on your data to find existing errors. Um, so some of the things that I use would be GP tools, select by attribute, select by location, probably one of the most two ones that I would use to look, uh, to validate my data, making sure, you know, required fields are populated. There's also, um, an extension to ArcGIS called Data Reviewer, um, where you can create a data reviewer batch job that can validate your data. Now, let's talk about 
documenting. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to do documentation. You know, it's definitely not one of my favorite things, but I know that it's important. Um, I feel that coming up with a QA plan will help you define um, the purpose and the checks and, you know, kind of like the process that you're going to go in and, and make your data better. Right. So having it doesn't have to be a very big document, but having something documented. Right. So what's the purpose of this um, QA plan? You know, is this QA plan for a data migration project or is it for just the, um, the overall health of your of your GIS database? Right. Something that you want to implement as you're doing your daily maintenance of your GIS data. So think about roles and responsibilities. You know, who is going to do the QA, QC? Uh, maybe you will have a different set of people that does quality control, or maybe it's the same person that does the editing. So, and then think about your testing environment, making sure that everyone's on the same software, right? Making sure that we're all in the same software and that we have our patches installed. And think about the acceptance criteria too. What's acceptable in your data? What kind of errors are critical? And then what kind of errors that um, maybe not as critical and you know you may not have to address it right away. It should also talk about your workflow, the tools and processes that you would um, perform to check your data. And then you may want to be able to create reports and what's those re reporting requirements going to be. Um, you know, maybe upper management is going to want to see those reports and see how good or bad the data is. So um, having a document, like I said, it doesn't have to be a huge elaborate document, but just something in there that tells you um, what is expected. Now, when you are, you know, developing your QA plan, you're going to have to think about the requirements for your data. So well, what would you do or how would you go about identifying those requirements? Well, think about your GIS applications. What are you going to be doing? What do you want to do? Um, you know, if it's going to be tracing or routing or, you know, whatever that may be, you're going to want to make sure that that data is good, right? So like if you have tax parcels, you know, tax parcels shouldn't be overlapping each other. So that would be one of the rules. Um, also, if you have business systems that's using the GIS database, you know, you may also have to have some rules to be able to support those business systems. Maybe, maybe there's a matter of having some fields that must be populated. Um, and then think about when you're doing, um, identifying these rules, what can you do that can be automated. How can you automate some of these checks? Um, I know that everything cannot be automated. Uh, you will have to do some manual and visual inspection of your data. Um, there's a nice tool that I use in Data Reviewer. It's a sampling check. And when I'm getting data from a customer, um, you know, I don't have the time or the resource to do 100% QC. So I will take a sample of the data and review that sample. And based on how many errors or found in that sample, we would determine whether or not it's good or acceptable or not. So, um, you know, identifying that that kind of requirements and documenting it will be very beneficial. Now, when you are ready to start configuring your checks, you've you know identified your requirements. Now you're like, okay, what can I automate? What can I what can I build to do this this data validation? Well. There's options out there for you. Um, it may seem a little bit um, overwhelming, like where do I start? Well, just start with the basics, right? Like what fields are required? You can use the geoprocessing tool, select by attributes, looking for nulls. Um, if you're looking for features that are overlapping, you can use you know, the um, select by location GP tool. Uh, start building models, create a toolbox. Um, that has like a, a list of checks that you need to perform on your data. Or if you are really good with Python, you can create Python scripts. If you have data reviewer, you can configure data reviewer checks against your data. And now in Pro, you have the ability to create attribute rules using Arcade. Um, so, you know, think about where you can input these automated ways of doing data validation. Now, also, there's going to be times when you need to do manual data validation, right? So you're going to want to set that up properly as well, whether it's creating an ArcMap document, 
uh, an MXD with the proper symbology and um, layers and you know definition queries, whatever that may be. Um, or if you're using Pro, creating creating a project with the map with you know those layers and symbology, um, there's a lot that you can check visually. Data Reviewer has a nice tool. Um, I know it's in ArcMap, not sure if it's in Pro just yet, but they have a tool to systematically go through a grid and review that grid and you can keep track of what's been reviewed and what hasn't been reviewed. And then also I recommend creating a checklist. What are you looking for when you're doing a visual validation? You know, you're checking for proper placement, proper coding. Um, so, you know, maybe create a, a simple checklist of these are the things I need to be looking for. Okay, so now that we have some checks created, well, when do I need to be doing this? Uh, well, actually, I think this is something that should be done on a daily basis, especially if you're editing daily. Make this part of your editing workflow. After you've finished editing a particular area in your map, validate it. Make sure that you didn't create errors and that you're introducing errors. Once it's been validated and everything is good, then you can reconcile and post it. Um, you just have to, you know, validate that extent. You don't have to validate the entire database. Now, also, I do recommend validating, validating the entire database, but not as often. Maybe it's weekly or monthly. You can schedule this, run it on the full database. Um, so that way you can kind of get a feel of how your data is looking overall, right? So you can kind of keep track of, you know, the quality, if it's improving or if it's not, you know, maybe it's getting worse, what's going on. So you want to be able to um, be able to kind of follow that and, and perform these uh, weekly or monthly validation. And then, you know, also when you get new data, if you're getting new data coming in, um, you want to be able to update that or you want to be able to validate that data whether it's just an updated data set or a completely new data set you want to be able to perform validation on that data to make sure it's acceptable so what we talked about today was why is it important and that it should be performed regularly you know this needs to be supporting our um, GIS applications it needs to be supporting our business systems. Uh, we are, you know, dependent on this data to make important decisions. And also just wanted to mention that, you know, it's not something you do once and you're done. This is something that you do on a continual basis. Create a QA plan, make it simple. Um, define your QC requirements in there. You know, think about you know, the, the applications and the systems that's using the data to, to come up with those requirements. And then also create, create the validation, create those checks. You know, you want to create a repeatable automated process as much as automated as much as you can. Um, that will help that everyone on your team is performing the same set of validation, that nothing's being missed, and that it's something that's being done on a regular basis. Now, some things that I talked about, you know, QA, I talked about is a way of um, preventing errors from being introduced in your, into your data. So we have some standard data models out there that you can start off with um, that has, you know, already got your fields with domains, um, you know, may have some topology, um, some networks. So take a look at those and that could be a great starting place. But, you know, starting out with a good, strong data model, I think, is like the foundation of that quality of your database. Um, there's some industry-related editing templates out there um, that has some tools that will help you edit the data efficiently. Um, for example, Attribute Assistant in ArcMap and then Attribute Rules in Pro. Um, out there on our solution website, there's some... Um, really good resources out there so I would definitely encourage you to go check those out and today I hope that I was able to give you some ideas and really encourage you to build your QAQC workflows within your environment within your team 
um, quality is very important on your with your data and you want to make sure that you're not neglecting it. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.